Welcome to Azad Bhai Academy. Today I will talk about types of agonist. Okay, the first lecture was uh, related to agonist and antagonist, and second lecture would be related to just completely types of agonist. Okay, so now come to the point that is topic is types of agonist. Okay, so agonist has two basic character. One is it must have affinity and efficacy. If two criteria is fulfilled by any substances, that can be considered as a agonist. That can be positive or negative. Okay, the name would be different, but the uh, it, it must be in class of agonist. Okay, so now come to the uh, uh, types. Firstly, one is full agonist. Full agonist. That means it will bind properly with the receptor, perfect match with the receptor, and binding site and stimulatory site properly it will bind and it will give its maximum activity. Okay, so when it will give its maximum activity, that would be the full agonist. Okay, so example, you can say morphine, you can say that is acetylcholine, actually morphine would be related to mu receptor, acetylcholine you say the muscarinic receptor, or if you think about uh, norepinephrine or epinephrine, that would be adrenergic receptor. So these are the uh, example of full agonist. So how uh, it will work, then I will give you just uh, graphically. So now, here if you think, this is the zero activity. So zero activity means, what will be the example? That is an antagonist. Antagonist. Zero activity, no activity, affinity may have, affinity uh, must have, but no efficacy. So the zero activity. This is the antagonist. Okay? And here, the activity will increase with the increase of the dose. So the activity will be maximum. Suppose if you think this one is zero, this one is 20, 30, 40, 60, 70, 80, 100. So that is the maximum activity. So maximum activity, the example is full agonist. Okay? And now the second types is partial agonist. Partial agonist. So partial agonist means you know the partial, not maximum, so sub-maximum activity. So maximum is below maximum, not 100% it will give its function, it will give its function 30%, 60%, 70%, 80%, but not 100%, that means sub maximum So that would be the partial agonist. Why that would be the uh, partial agonist? I will try to give some uh, uh, main causes. So if you just think here, that it will be the like that. So this is the full agonist, and this is the partial agonist. Okay. So how if you think just like that? So this is the uh, you can consider this is a receptor. Okay, and it will completely like that, completely fit with the binding site and the stimulatory site. So that would be the full agonist. If you think, just try to draw here the example. So that is the like that. So here it will fit here like that. So it will bind the 
receptor properly, but here it will fit in that area, but in that area it will not be activated. So partially it will activate, activate the uh, receptor, partially it change the conformation. So this is the partial, so partial agonist. So partial agonist, if we just uh, give an example that is, you know, that is trauma down, trauma down, you know, the baspiran, trauma down indicated from new receptor, and baspiran, baspiran is related to 5-HT, 5-HT, 1A receptor, and if you think that is the cell butamol related to beta 2 receptor. Okay, so these are the you know the partial agonist example. Okay, so this is the partial agonist. Now come to the uh, third case that is you know ortho hysteric agonist. I will not give details because orthostatic means as like a full agonist. That means it will bind partial or full. That doesn't matter. Matter is it will bind the main binding site. That is main binding point. Other, other than uh, if it is bind with here or there, so that will be the another uh, matter. But it will be the allosteric. But also hysteric uh, means the main active binding site, it will bind, okay? So when drug will bind with the main binding site of the receptor, that is called orthostatic agonist. So if you uh, give example, all the examples related to that, okay? So you can say morphine, you can say salvitomol, you can say tramadol, you can say uh, dopamine, you can say serotonin. So these are the orthostatic. So this is very simple one, the main binding site, when those substances, uh, drugs or ligand bind with the main binding site of the receptor, that is the orthostatic. And the fourth one is allosteric. Allosteric uh, agonist. Allosteric means other than the main binding site. Okay, suppose if you think this one is the membrane and this one is the receptor, and this is the main binding site. Okay, the main binding site is that one, that area. But the drug will bind, suppose here. So, when the drug will bind with the receptor other than main binding site. Okay, so that would be the example of allosteric agonist. So why it will be the agonist? Because when the ligand will or drug will bind with the receptor, it will change the conformation of the receptor and that will facilitate directly the activity. Okay, it is, it may be connected with the uh, ligand or not. Without, uh, with the, uh, without that means without uh, ligand binding, that uh, agonist, or drug can change the conformation of the receptor by binding with the other binding site of the uh, other binding site of the main, main binding site. That means the allosteric ligand, that means the ligand will bind with the allosteric site, that means other than main binding site, and it will be able to change the conformation and that will give the allosteric function that may be in presence of ligand or absence of ligand, okay? That means it will not change the activity of the ligand. It will just change the activity of the receptor, okay? Because it is agonist, why it is called agonist? Because it is able to change the conformation of the receptor. So this is the agonist and this is allosteric. Why it is called allosteric? Because it just binds other than active binding site. So this is the allosteric binding site. Okay, so if I just give a example of the allosteric binding site, that is, you know, the example is very uh, rare of that class of drug, but uh, I will try to give you some example. That is, actually you can say, 
Sina Calcet. Okay, Sina Calcet, this drug belongs to the basically calcium sensitive receptor. That receptor is present in different organs, but basically this drug is related to parathyroidism. That means the receptor present on the parathyroid gland and that will be helpful for parathyroidism. Okay, so this one, this drug. This drug is also uh, useful for chronic kidney disease, you know. So this is the Sina calcite and this is the example of allosteric agonist. If you just give another example, that is N des methyl clozapine. You know, the clozapine is antipsychotic drug and the des, uh, N desmethyl uh, clozapine is the metabolite of clozapine. And this one is also an example of allosteric agonist, which is basically works on M1 receptor. Okay, so this is the allosteric agonist. So don't uh, be confused with positive allosteric modulator. Now this fifth one would be the positive allosteric modulator. So just I will uh, discuss here now. So fifth one is positive allosteric modulator. That means it will just change the activity of the ligand. Modulate. It will change. It will change. It will modulate the activity of the ligand by binding with the allosteric side. That means other than binding side, and the activity will be positive. Okay. So now come to the structure. So suppose this one is a receptor and this one is connected with the receptor is in the ion channel okay and this receptor is GABA receptor GABA A receptor and of course here bind GABA so this is GABA okay so when GABA will bind in the GABA receptor it will just open the chloride channel this one is the chloride channel. And chloride will enter and it will cause hyperchlorization. Okay. But one drug will bind other than GABA binding site. That means main ligand binding site. Other than that means suppose it will bind, this will bind here. This is another drug against. It will bind the another place other than that means uh, GABA binding site and that class of drug is now uh, benzodiazepine, benzodiazepine, example you know diazepam, clonazepam like that. When the diazepam binds with the diazepam binding site of the GABA receptor, it will change the conformation and it will facilitate more GABA binding to the GABA receptor. That means it will increase the affinity of GABA to the, towards the GABA receptor. That means it will increase the binding frequency of the GABA to the GABA receptor. Then what will happen? The opening frequency of the chloride channel will increase. Then what will happen? More chloride will enter into the uh, nerve cell. And then what will happen? It will cause hyperchlorination, and your nerve will be give function just completely opposite of depolarization. That means your nerve will become quiet. Your nerve will be depressed. Okay. So here the Benzodiazepine is just working on the GABA receptor by binding with the GABA benzodiazepine binding site. That means not GABA binding site. Okay, not active ligand binding site. So this is the allosteric and it will just modulate the function of the GABA. So this is the modulator. And the modulator function will just close the chloride channel or also facilitate to open the chloride channel as like GABA. So this benzodiazepine will facilitate to open the chloride channel as like GABA. So this is the positive activity. This is the positive activity. And the activity is uh, solely uh, responsible of uh, vegetarian function. No, it is completely depends on GABA, but it will increase the binding frequency of the GABA to the receptor. 
okay so it will not uh, independently responsible to open the chloride channel so this is a modulator this is not like a allosteric agonist agonist means it must have the ability to change the conformation and give the function okay so here also agonist because it change the conformation but it will facilitate to just increase the gamma and the frequency to the gamma receptor not it will independently able to open the chloride channel if to it to open the chloride channel that would be the class of allosteric agonist but here it will just facilitate to that means gamma must needed here that means gamma and gamma receptor complex it will work on the gamma gamma receptor complex it will facilitate to increase the affinity and activity by okay then your chloride channel will open so this is the positive allosteric modulator and you know the example prosopon dage from bose from these are the uh, example of positive allosteric modulator okay so now the six one is six one is now six one is inverse inverse agonist okay so inverse you know reverse inverse means opposite and agonist it is agonist but the activity is opposite so this is uh, somewhat confusing so just i will try to make it clear so inverse agonist means the agonist must have the ability to have uh bind with the receptor and must have ability to change the conformation of the receptor so it must have affinity and efficacy so that it could be the agonist but but function would be opposite so that is the somewhat different things okay so now some in our body some receptors are independently somewhat from our active in a certain extent and that will give the function but when ligand will bind and it will be highly activated and it will give maximum effect but when something will bind with it and it will uh, it will change the conformation and it will change the activity of the receptor in a opposite manner okay so that would be the example of inverse agonist how suppose in your in our body like if you think in the brain h1 receptor and you can think in parietal cell h2 receptor they can be actively they can be able to work independently in a certain extent as a basal activity suppose you know the zero activity suppose you can say the 10 or 20 suppose 20 activity in normal level without any help of agonist so the, the 20 activity is the basal activity and you can say this is the constitutive activity constitutive activity that means other than binding on anything with the receptor the receptor is, is active in a certain extent and you know these are the histaminic receptor h1 and h2 so when histamine will bind it will give the maximum activity but in the absence of histamine it is working in a certain extent the 20% okay so this is the basal activity or you can say constitutive activity okay and here you can say constitutive agonist so now inverse why it is inverse so when here in your brain you know first generation and histamine diphen hydramine diphen hydramine when it will bind with the h1 receptor the it will change the conformation because it must have the ability to show the its efficacy okay so it will change the conformation and the uh, function will change in a negative manner that means from 22 here it will just come in that way like you can say minus uh, 50 okay so the activity is towards the negative manner so this is the inverse inverse and why it is agonist it should be antagonist but antagonist is it has no activity 
it is infinity, but it has no activity. So this is the zero. But this activity is zero? No. This activity is below zero, that means minus 80. So some yield activity also an activity. So this is the inverse agonist. Okay. So the example would be diphenhydramine. So you can, if you think in parietal cell, so that would be the, uh, you know, uh, your renitidine. Renitidine. If you think uh, for mu uh, receptor, so that is that would be the uh, naloxan. Okay. If you think the yeah, naltrexan. This is also an example of related to mu receptor. So these are the inverse agonist activity. So here is the inverse agonist. So agonist is always positive, not like that, negative. Agonist must have the ability to change the conformation of the receptor. But antagonist has ability to bind the receptor. That, that would be that would be that would be the terminology of affinity, but has no efficacy, no activity. Okay, so this is six one is inverse agonist. Now the seventh one is a direct agonist. I will not give you uh, give here uh, more time because when your ligand will work on the receptor. This is the direct agonist. Directly it will work on the receptor and it will give function as an agonist. Okay, so this is the direct agonist. So when already I uh, have given uh, different example, all the example you can uh, uh, relate the direct agonist because it is related to the receptor. Okay, so you can say dopamine, you can say morphine, you can say epinephrine, you can say acetylcholine. These are the direct acting agonists. And eighth one is indirect. Indirect acting. Indirect agonist. That means it will not work on the receptor, but it will facilitate to work the ligands. Okay. Something if you think uh, this is, uh, you can say, noradrenaline. This is noradrenaline. And one enemy is there. Suppose this one is an, this one is his enemy. It's enemy. Like you can say this is a, a monoamino oxidase, or you can say catecholamine O methyl transferase. So this, these are the enzyme which will degrade the noradrenaline. So what will happen if you uh, take monoamine oxidase inhibitor? So your noradrenaline will be free, and then it will bind in the receptor and it will work. So monoamine oxidase inhibitor is just helping the noradrenaline, not working directly here. If you think uh, something, suppose this is the your nerve ending, and here is the vesicle and this is, contains noradrenaline, okay, noradrenaline, noradrenaline. So if you take amphetamine, then what will happen? Amphetamine will just increase, uh, activate the synaptic terminal to release more noradrenaline, okay. So more adrenaline will bind with the receptor and will give its function. So amphetamine will uh, this, it is working on the receptor or it is just facilitated to increase the to increase the release of adrenaline. It is increase the release of adrenaline. So it is working indirectly. So like uh, if it rain, you can say. You can say also the example of uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Uh, you can say fluxetin, deluxetin, uh, sertraline like that. So. If some drugs are just uh, releasing from the postsynaptic uh, presynaptic terminal, and it will again reuptake by the reuptake receptor, reuptake channel. 
So what will happen? The reuptake inhibitor will block the channel and the serotonin will be free or sufficient to activate the prosynaptic receptor. Okay, so it is working on directly the serotonin receptor? No, it is just working by blocking the channel for reuptake. Okay, so these are the example of indirect. That means it will not directly or from the receptor, it is working or facilitated or it just helping the main ligand other than binding the receptor. So this is the uh, indirect acting uh, agonist. Okay, so this is all about types of agonist. So I will just sum up very quickly. Full agonist, that means it will completely uh, completely bind with the receptor and it will give the maximum activity. And partial, it will partially bind with the receptor and it will give the partial function. It is also called partial antagonist. And then third one is orthoesteric, that means completely bind with the main binding site, it is the orthoesteric. And allosteric, that means it will not bind with the ligand binding site, it will bind with the other uh, part of the receptor. This is the allosteric agonist. And it will give the facilitated to uh, modulate the activity of the receptor, not the ligand. Okay. And third one, fourth one is a positive allosteric modulator. It will just bind other than the bind, other than the ligand binding site, and it will modulate the receptor activity, modulate the function of the uh, ligand. Okay. And then uh, inverse agonist. That means it will bind with the receptor, and it will change the conformation in that in a, uh, in a certain manner that will just give the function and completely opposite of the main function. So this is the inverse agonist. And then the next one is direct acting, that means it will directly work on the receptor. And direct acting, that means it will not work on the receptor, but it will help the mainstream agonist ligand. So this is the uh, direct acting. So thank you very much.